To have everything laid out like this so I can see what's gonna go on before I go up to the machine is essential. One wrong line of code right here and you could break multiple things that cost thousands of dollars. You don't wanna do that. So the way SolidCam lays it out for you and shows you what this is gonna look like before we run it is really, honestly, it's very, very nice. It's very, very simple. Again, that tool from Horn that does this really ripped through that stock. I was blown away at how it functioned like that. Normally those tools chatter like crazy. The fact that I could just drop in there with that rigid of a tool and just rip my splines away like that, really, I have been very, very, very impressed with that tool. So yeah, you'll see, I come in here now and I turn away the OD in my partner. You can see both spindles are synced together. It's an 8 to 1 diameter to length ratio on its sticker. Let's see how that goes. Let's hop into SolidWorks here and look at my solution to this problem. So my thought to make this work better is to design a steady rest. So my turret can mill this whole part in one section. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that this machine has two collinear axes. It has X1 and X2 which are aligned with each other. So I can put something in my main gang to support the part while the turret does the milling. And that's exactly what I designed up here. So the tools that go on my main gang are 5 8 And luckily we have some aluminum plate here that's 5 8 in thickness. So that's what I designed this part around. The first thing I'm gonna do is just throw this in our DN Solutions BVM and I ran a brush over it to make it look as good as possible and get rid of any high spots. It kind of deburs everything for you, makes it look really, really good. For machining it in solid cam, honestly, it was pretty simple. We don't really need to go into too much detail on how I did it. It only required two tools. I used a half inch end mill and a 60 degree keyway cutter to put the shape in there that'll hold the part. And the final operation I did was my cutoff on the mill. Basically, all I did here was just step down slowly and make it so all I'd have is a 30 thousandths tab left so I could just rip the part off the stock. So to get this set up the way I want, I let the machine run the part of the program that does this diameter right here. That way I have the exact spot I'm going to be setting my tool to. So now I can call it up an MDI and then slide my tool up to that position. So I slid the steady rest to my part. We're about to see how good this works. All right. Oh wow. Whew. Oh man, that sounds really good. This should look a lot better. Oh yeah, that's absolutely perfect. All right, let's cut it off and take a closer look. And it drops, but it's okay. All right, so that worked pretty well, I gotta say. You know, we started out, we tried it in one pass, didn't work whatsoever. Tried it in two passes, still wasn't quite there. And making ourselves a steady rest really enabled us to do this perfectly in one pass. So sometimes, you know, in machines like this, you gotta use what you got, right? We have two collinear x-axes, that makes it super simple to do things like this. So it's kind of another reason why I love the Swiss Deco. It has so many different options and features on it, you can kind of think outside the box and do stuff like this.